Welcome to Radio Free Sunroot. This is Colibri's weekly column. Thinking Outside the Social Media Echo Chamber, August 5th, 2020. Social media algorithms serve us up with what we like to see, because the more we scroll, the more data they can harvest, and selling that data is their business model. Lately, it's been popular to refer to the increasingly narrow worldview that we receive this way as an echo chamber. Commentators have been warning that both ignorance and polarization are the result, and that we need to take deliberate steps to avoid being boxed in and judgmental. I agree. One suggested remedy I saw recently is to keep people with, quote, completely opposite political views, end quote, on your newsfeed, in part because this will remind you that people who believe these odious things are humans too. That's fine as far as it goes, but let's go further. I propose that the key word is not opposite, but outside. Breaking down issues into sets of opposite views is itself a product of the colonial Western worldview, and that's a larger echo chamber that we inhabit. Its intellectual tradition, which proudly roots itself in ancient Greece, is hobbled by duality, which is neither inherent to the world nor helpful for modeling political topics. Rather than picturing ourselves along a spectrum, defined by only two directions, we can envision ourselves in bubbles, which extend into all directions. Our knowledge and experience is demarcated by how big our bubble is. This admits to being in a bubble, which is honest. First, because here in the developed West, we are insulated from many forms of reality that are commonplace elsewhere, such as bombed-out cities, mass starvation, and child slavery. That all these terrible crimes are connected to our own material wealth here is even less known. These things are outside our collective bubble. Second, our individual bubble is a product of our upbringing, experience, and constitution, most of which is not in our control. That is, each of us was handed something to work with that we didn't choose. We can decide what we'll do with it, though, as circumstances allow. We can push the walls of the bubble out to include more, to widen our perspective. This process might include keeping people in your social media newsfeed who have, quote, completely opposite political views, end quote. But that would only be one element. If we are talking about the very limited world of social media, I would suggest adding people to your feed who offer points of view that are defined less by how they relate to yours in a polar way and more by how outside they are of your bubble. Because batting the same ball back and forth between two sides is really only fun if it's with a racket or a paddle or in a swimsuit on the beach. When it comes to your knowledge and understanding of life, that approach won't get you far. It's reductive and flattens the bubble. Life is not two-dimensional. Living it that way will not lead to satisfaction or growth. Look back over the centuries of tragedy that led us to this moment. So much brutality and bloodshed, all the way back to Mesopotamia, when this good versus evil slop started getting dished out. Have any of our civilizations since then worked out? As in, accumulated wealth without imposing suffering on humans and nature? Some, like the pre-patriarchal Crete that Rianne Eisler speaks of, were certainly better than others, but we here in the U.S. are among the worst. We owe it to this planet to widen our field of vision. Rather than viewing life as a series of us-versus-them battles, we must step back and look around. Personally, I don't see the point of ensuring that my own social media feed has at least one homophobic jerk on it who could remind me on a daily basis that people who hate fags are humans too or who will spew the racist shit I heard regularly during my red state childhood, or who is going to denigrate all my sisters because it's the only way they know how to feel like a man. Conversely, as a white U.S. American, I find it totally valuable for my feed to include Native Americans, blacks, and other people of color, as well as a generous amount of people who live in other countries. Additionally, non-political interest groups such as plant, bird, and insect identification forms offer a much-needed reminder that it's not all about humans. And, of course, cat videos are essential and cut across all socio-political lines. The Internet and social media give us an opportunity to expose ourselves to all sorts of different cultures and ideas. The fact that most U.S. Americans don't seem to use it that way reminds me of how I have often found myself to be the only white person in an Asian, Middle Eastern, or Latinx grocery store. I mean, if the U.S. has been good for anything, it's been as a place where you can choose from a dizzying array of foods from around the world, probably unprecedented in history, yet many people just stick with the same set of narrow, habituated choices. Which might be getting more to the heart of things. 
In general, U.S. Americans have never been interested in other cultures, and are not only satisfied with living in an echo chamber in real life, but seek to keep it that way. In that sense, social media algorithms are merely reflective of how we've always behaved anyway. A few people are curious, but most people are not. Personally, I greatly appreciate people who are smarter, wiser, or clearer seeing than I am in whatever way, whether the topic is politics, food propagation, or car repair, and I am happy that this is a pool of people so large that I can draw on it from the rest of my life. As I am exposed to the words and ideas of people like that, my understanding of life expands. Instead of merely seeing that people are human in spite of their shortcomings, I can enjoy that people are inspiring in spite of their suffering. In other words, I'd rather seek hands to hold in the darkness rather than fists to fend off. If you enjoyed this reading today, please consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash colibri, K-O-L-L-I-B-R-I. -L -L to find out about the other podcasting I do, visit radiofreesunroot.com.